Yeah, hello, this is Lobo here. I hope you guys are doing swell today. This is something new that I'm going to be doing uh, in the case of Guilty Gear Strive. They have a new gameplay reveal trailer that they showcase exactly how Slayer exactly plays against Soul and then against Johnny. And I'm here to break apart some of the things that I noticed in the gameplay instead of just reviewing everything. So that way I don't waste your time. But I will showcase some of the things that I do know from Rev 2, or in this case Guilty Gear Exort Rev 2, so that that way you'll give in an example as to how exactly Slayer plays in this variation of the game and then into Strive. So let's get to it. So for first off, what we see in Strive, Slayer performs the usual stick with Paul Bunker. Paul Bunker in Strive seems to immediately go through a stage break or in this case ends up going through a wall splat that transitions into a stage transition. But in the case of Slayer and Rev 2, that doesn't really happen. Instead, if he goes towards the corner of the stage and performs a power bunker, he gets a regular wall splat, still giving him ample time to go for combos if he wants to. When going back and seeing the video, you can also see that while Slayer is attempting to do, go for a regular string combo or Gatling combo against Soul, he does end up managing to even go into Bloodsucking Universe's command graph from his strings. That's not the case if you're playing Slayer in Rev 2, that doesn't really happen. So this means that whenever Slayer does a particular combo, he can actually immediately amplify himself when using Bloodsucking Universe from all of his Gatlings, at least whenever he's getting close to the opponent and performing it. I would have thought that instead, if he attempts to go for the grab, it'll just go into, like, let's say, a techable situation where the opponent is able to move around if he attempts to go for a grab, but that's not the case. Now, as we see in the video, we also end up seeing that whenever Slayer goes for Bloodsucking Universe and he gets amplified, it amplifies all of his moves. That means his normal hits, as well as his specials. But in the case of Rev 2, that's of course not the case. As you see, all of his normals don't give him a counter hit property. This only works with his specials only. Meaning that they have simply simplified Slayer's gameplay and made it easier to get a counter hit property from any of the attacks that he performs in game and strive. This allows him access to a lot more potential to dealing even more damage against the opponent. Also from what we've seen in the overall trailer for Slayer, we see that he doesn't have the same particular type of... Another thing that I noticed also in the video was that Slayer can also perform a regular attack, let's say a close slash, into a forward heavy slash, or in this case 6H. You can't really do that with Slayer and Rev 2. It doesn't work. The enemy immediately techs away from attempting to go for the 6H with Slayer. But instead, in Strive, it seems like it does work. Or if in the case he can still do it from other moves. Another trait that I saw in the video was that whenever Slayer went for 2D, his sweep, in that variation of the video, it showcased that he can actually special cancel out of the 2D. You can't do this with Slayer in this variation of the game. So you have, you're stuck to basically using the 2D and commit to it. You can't cancel out of it. Also, the other thing that I've also noticed in the video was that whenever Slayer attempts to go for a particular combo, all of his combos seem to be quite simple. They don't really rely heavily in using air-to-air -air combos, unlike in Rep 2, where a lot of his BMBs, at least whenever he gets a launch, 
allows them to grant access to a lot of air-to-air -air combos. But in Strive, since it's more grounded, almost like Street Fighter or Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, you're going to be opting to use a lot of PAL bunkers to get your damage across the enemy. Or in some cases, depending on once we get the release of Slayer, we can then see exactly if he performs with different overall combo variations with his follow-ups from Danny set. But for now, from what I can see, his air-to-air -air combo is not as strong as it used to be, or as flashy or stylish as it used to be in Rev 2. As an example, here's one demonstration of a particular BNB combo that Slayer can do in the game from a launcher. And now, seeing that in the case of Strive, there's a heavy emphasis of using Red Roman Cancel to get overall more extensions for your combos. In this game, seeing that it was very prevalent to use more YRCs or yellow roaming cancels to try to cancel out your moves and perform better in the matchup against stronger opponents, of course you can still use red roaming cancels, especially with Slayer, since it was emphasized if you really want to get more damage across, in the case if you were if you were in the need of using some big damage, you would end up using your tension to go for some heavy damage combos with Slayer. This is usually one of the biggest traits about Slayer is that whenever you get a Pal Bunker, it was it's very satisfying. That once you land the Pal Bunker and let's say you have meter and you want to expend it, you can get even more overall damage. One of the combos that he can do, of course, is that if he's near the corner and let's say he gets a heavy slash against the opponent, it staggers them. And if he has enough time, you can then perform a Danny step into a Pal Bunker or any other move that he wishes to use right afterwards. Of course, this is really guaranteed if the opponent knows how to stagger break away if they get hit by a heavy slash into a pal bunker. It's not exactly guaranteed. It is difficult to get away from if you don't know how to completely mash your controller or your keyboard if you're playing on Steam, that is. Or if you know just exactly just palm face the keyboard to your face or just break the controller towards your face and then just basically mash everything like crazy and you immediately break the stagger recovery so that way you'll be able to recover quickly enough and then you can then block the initial hit that comes right afterwards but it's not hard it's not exactly hard to do i'm just being hyperbolic about it essentially also i'm not really sure if whether or not if a 6p like in red 2 has the properties if he's near the corner or the opponents near the corner, grant him access to combos as well. So we're not really sure whether or not if Slayer and Strive can do the same thing. It could be a chance that it's not the case. 6P for Slayer in Rev 2 was particularly strong in the game because it has a lot of almost like armor properties as well. So that way he can then use it against the opponent and giving him access to combos, especially if he has meter. There is lots of implications you can use with Slayer and Rev 2, but seeing that what we're looking at in the video, Slayer seems to be a big powerhouse character and more or less of the more mobile type of character that we see in Rev 2 where you're using a lot of your dandy steps into cancels and whatnot. So you gotta be a lot more precise in trying to get what you want. But I do like the variation that they change in Slayer and Strive. Seeing that you can now combo into your blood sucking universe command grab to amplify Slayer and giving him access to counter hitting properties whenever you get to hit off of the opponent is a very good thing in my opinion. So overall, I find myself really liking Slayer's overall gameplay, more so than when they released Johnny into Strive. Johnny's gameplay, though fun and more simplified, I genuinely preferred the fact that whenever he had coins, he can then use it to amplify his abilities, or in this case his misfinders, so that he can then get even more, I guess you can say more pressure game to then get either a launcher off the opponent. But now you just throw a card and you just hit the card and that does the job for you. So they kind of made him a little boring in my opinion. But Slayer, one of my biggest main characters that I played in Rev 2 during the time that it was alive, it's still alive now, kind of, but you get the point. It feels newer, but also still feels like the legacy the traits that he has is still right there in the game. So without further ado, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Give the video a like. Subscribe to see more of my shit. Hit the notification bell if you want to see more of my videos. And yeah, stay tuned.
Slayer wins. 